Hello and welcome to the ASP.NET's Core 5 tutorial series, I guess you would call it. This is the very first one, and we're simply going to start a tutorial series where we are going to explore ASP.NET's programming using uh, .NET Core 5 for web development using the MVC pattern. So before we get started, there are some prerequisites, something I will assume that you know. And the first one is that I will assume you know some um, C Sharp. You don't have to be a master programmer, but I'm not going to go through and, and talk about what a variable is and what a class is. Um, I will explain you know, I will assume that you know these basic things. Um, I might explain if we go a little bit deeper, like if we start to use interfaces somewhere, uh, if we start to use certain, maybe more like programming paradigms, uh, more patterns, I will explain that, but I will not cover, you know, what a variable is and what an if statement is. So I will assume you know that. It doesn't necessarily have to be C sharp. It can, you know, it could be Java um, or PHP or another programming language, as long as you're familiar with programming concepts, because we are not going to cover those. I will also assume that you have some HTML, CSS, and JavaScript experience. Again, you don't have to be a professional, you don't have to know a lot, but I will assume that you know a little bit about um, what it is. We're not going to cover what a div is, um, what an, an H1 and an H2 is, um, how you can style it, or what JavaScript is. We're not going to cover those things. But I assume that you know at least the basics of it. I'm also going to assume that you do know some uh, basic MVC. You know the, the model view controller pattern. You know you, you've heard of it. You don't necessarily have to have any experience with it. And we are going to mention or talk a little bit about what it is in, in relation to how ASP.NET is using it, but we're not going to go into an in-depth discussion on what the pattern is and why you would use it. I will also assume that you have no ASP.NET experience whatsoever. I don't assume that you have ever worked in this environment. I don't assume that you know Visual Studio. I don't assume that you know any of the previous versions of ASP.NET. I assume you're brand new at this concept. So essentially, I'm assuming that you're someone who's coming from another web development background and you want to move into ASP.NET programming. And of course, I will assume that you want to learn ASP.NET with a focus on the web development portion. We're not going to go into um, app development or Windows desktop applications development, even though some of the concepts are applicable in those areas, we are going to focus on the web application using the MVC pattern. So with that out of the way, let's get to it. The very first thing you need is to simply get a hold of Visual Studio. And we go to our good friend Google and we simply say download Visual Studio. Now Visual Studio has changed a lot. Uh, there was a time where it was a Windows only software, but now you can see that we actually have for macOS as well. So you can sit on a Mac or a Linux and still use Visual Studio and follow along with this tutorial. Now, I am going to use Visual Studio for Windows, and there are slight differences in where the menus are, but everything is there. It might just be in different areas for whatever reason. So if you're on a Mac or a Linux, you simply download the appropriate versions. If you are on a Windows, you simply take the Community Edition right here to the left. And you simply download that and install it. Now, it will ask you which parts of Visual Studio you want to install. I've already installed mine, so I can't show you. But basically, you just want the web parts, uh, the MVC, the .NET Core. You don't need any of the uh, iOS or the Android or uh, any anything like that. You don't need that. You can always add it later if you want to. So after you have installed Visual Studio, you can simply open up the little search bar here and you can type in Visual Studio and you should have the Visual Studio program installed on your machine. So we simply open that up and we get presented with this page. 
Now, on the left here, you are going to have the most recent projects. If you just installed it, you won't have any there, so that's absolutely, absolutely fine. On the right-hand side, we have a lot of different options, and we're not going to go through any of those. We're just going to talk about the bottom one here, the create a new project, because that's what we need to, well, create a new project. So we press that, and we are then presented with a lot of different templates. And there are quite a lot, and depending on how much you installed when you installed Visual Studio, you might have even more than this. So there is a lot here. So you can filter out a lot if you simply write core up here, then you will get everything that has to do with ASP.NET Core, but granted, that is pretty much everything. So that doesn't help us a whole lot, but we are interested in web development. So if we write web, we get the ones that has to do with web development, and we can see we have ASP.NET Core for a web API, um, we have for a web app, and we have this one, uh, the ASP.NET Core web app model view controller. This is the one we want, and just be careful that there's actually two different versions. They have identical names, but there's one key difference, and that is that this one uses C sharp, whereas this one uses F sharp. So a very very big difference. And we're going to use this one. And essentially this is just a starting point to use the model view controller pattern. This one is identical except that it doesn't have the model view controller structure set up from the get-go. You could go in and add that manually, but if you are developing a new application, you want to create a new website, you would pretty much always need this sort of template, unless you're doing something very basic or if unless you're making an API. So we are going to select the model view controller. We're going to click Next. And then we can give the project a name. I'm simply going to call this um, my cookbook because that's what we are going to be developing. We're essentially going to be making a small personal cookbook. And then you can choose the location you want to place it in. And I simply have a folder for all my Visual Studio projects and on my C drive, so that's where I'm going to place mine, but you can place it wherever you want to. And the last two, we're just going to leave as is. Um, this one is something called a solution name. Essentially, it's because you can make very, very big applications and a solution is sort of at the top of the project. So a solution could contain multiple projects in the same solution. Um, but right now, it doesn't really matter for us. So we're just going to leave them to the standards. I'm going to click Next. And then we have the target framework. Um, before .NET 5, we actually had two different versions. You had something called ASP.NET, and then you had .NET Core. And .NET Core was the new thing, you know, the new cross-platform, the new thing they were kind of developing. And it's been going on for, you know, you, you can see 2.1, 3.1, and now they've just changed it to .NET 5.0. So, you don't have to worry too much about the history, just know that whenever people are talking about ASP.NET Core, that is essentially what you're working with now. If they are talking about ASP.NET five or six years ago, then it's the old version, so to speak. But you are using, essentially, ASP.NET Core 5.0. Authentication type, we're going to leave to none because we want to kind of set everything up ourselves, but in the future, it's a really handy sort of um, addition to the template that you can include. So say you want um, individual accounts on your platform if you made, for instance, a, a cookbook where people could go in and they each had their own account, they could log in and manage their cookbooks, then they would have individual accounts. You know, you could create a user and that user could log in. If you included that here, they would actually create the boilerplate and set it all up for you which is just really, really handy and really, really powerful. But we're not going to do that. We want to do it ourselves. Um, we're going to configure for HTTPS 
which just means that whenever someone access your site, they get redirected to use the secure HTTPS version. And you would pretty much always enable this because there's not really a reason why you wouldn't make a web page that has the HTTPS uh, configured. You don't want to use Docker, we're not going to worry about that. Um, we are going to enable Racer Runtime Compilation. And we'll talk more about that when we get to it, but essentially it just means that if we edit our code, we can view the changes immediately at runtime, and we don't have to build the whole program again. So we're going to click, um, click Create, and we're just going to let it work its magic. It can take some time to initialize the project, especially if it's the first project you're making. So just let it um, do its thing and grab a coffee while you wait. And when you, when you get presented with this screen, then you are essentially ready and everything should be set up. Now, we have a lot over here that we want to explore. And this you have right here, you, you get presented with this overview up here in the top, this is, you could basically call it your tabs, um, like in a browser, you have different tabs. You can just close this, the first one, you don't really need it. In the left-hand side here, you have what's called the Solution Explorer, and that shows you all your files. At the top, you have what's called the solution, and remember, a solution could have multiple projects. Uh, right now, we just have one project called My Cookbook, and you can see when I select this one, it actually opens up that file in the editor here in the middle. And then you have lots of different stuff down here, and we're going to talk about that in a second. In the bottom, we have um, an output console, and then, of course, you have what you would expect from a program. You have all sorts of different settings that you can play around with. You can rearrange this as much as you want to. But we're not going to really do anything. We're just going to press this button right here, the play button. Press that one, let it build, and you should be presented with a browser that opens up the web application. And there we go. We are presented with a basic web application here. We can see it uses the HTTPS. Remember that we configured it to use that. Uh, we're at a local host at a random port. We are presented with the project we have created. As we can see here, it says My Cookbook. And this is just boilerplate that it creates, so we're not going to worry about that. I just want you to get to this point so that you know everything is working and you can build it and you can run it. Now, we ran it in what's called the debugger mode. So you can see here that while we have it here on on Visual Studio, we can actually see some diagnostics like um, the memory is taking up um, and stuff like that. So it, it takes a lot longer to run the application this way. And it's great if you want to do like really hard uh, debugging, you really want to test out how your application is doing. If we press on the red button there, you stop it. Um, but often when you're developing a web application, you make lots of small changes and you want to, you know, test it out and run it multiple times. And if you have to do it this way, every time it can take quite a long time to build all, you know, all depending on what type of machine you have. But there is another way you can do it. It's called running it without the uh, debugger mode. And I think it's on a Mac, you have to go up into the build, I think it's called. There is something, unfortunately, I'm not on a Mac right now, but up here somewhere, there is the option to run it without the debugger. If you're on a Windows, you simply press Control F5, and you can see it fires up the application. It goes much, much faster, but you can also see that this play button remains a play button. It doesn't show you any diagnostics, so it's just firing up the application in your local host environment, not using a debugger. So that's what you use 80% of the time if you're not doing any debugging. If you're just, you know, testing out, um, if you're working with the HTML or the CSS, that's usually what you are doing. There are those two options. 
and you can use um, either one, or you could you could also just run the big debugging every time if you wanted to. But now you know that both options exist. So this is actually going to be it for this series. In the next one, we are going to explore the type of files that we have in our project. And we're going to talk a little bit about the model view controller pattern that ASP.NET implements and how routing works. So thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.